Through the Ringer, I'm still your host, Tate Frazier, and we are here with Cousin Sal, and we are trying to make sense of what's happening in the world of sports. It's always a I, fun I like, time. I like how you say, I'm sorry, you say, I'm still your host. Like, oh my God, <laughs> no, something I, horrible happened over the, the commercial break. That's uh, the bit. Who knows? the Sky Rizzy ad for the 5,000th time today. Tate was replaced. <laughs> by uh, Brian Curtis. I think what, year three, I'm going to have someone slide in here. Uh, maybe I have <laughs> okay. you take over the hosting duties and we have some fun with it. That's the bit. It. You never know if it's going to be me on the other side, but I am back here and we get to talk about Thursday night football. Very fortunate to do this. And let's do a line look ahead here, Sal. We got the Steelers taking on the Cleveland Browns. This is in Cleveland, plus three and a half for the Browns. Total 35 and a half. Uh, a chance here for a Pittsburgh letdown game. Just flagging that for all the people. But Thursday night football is a little wacky, a little wonky, dare I I say but what do you like in this one so this is a tough one for me because on Sunday night with Simmons I guess like five and a half or something and it, I still think it should be that high after watching these two teams play for two months or whatever it's been but it is three and a half and I get it a little bit it's a division game you're talking about a bruiser the Steelers had a real bruising game against the Ravens and Jameis by the way is still hugging ex-teammates on the field in the <laughs> Superdome so they're definitely different last year's games were decided by a combined seven points. So you might say that that's why also it's low. Um, probably a stay away from me, except for the Sal Steel City special, mm -hmm. which is Brown's first half. Steelers win the game. We'll pay close to eight to one this week. Yeah, I feel like the letdown happens in the first half, first half, which is why I feel like the Steel City special is definitely in play, Sal. And you also like a player prop in this game on the Pittsburgh side of things, correct? I do. Pat Fryermuth, uh, over 18 and a half yards. He's gone over 18 in 10 of his last 13 games. He's averaged 33 and a half over that span. The Browns allow 47 plus yards to the lead tight end in three of their last five games. We're just looking for 18, not 47. I don't even know why I said that number. We're going to get it Thursday <laughs> night, Tate. Fans aren't booing, you know. They're yelling Muth. Mm -hmm. Although they might not be yelling that in, in Cleveland. I can't wait till he has 47 yards and we pull this up and we, <laughs> we do the Nostradamus thing. I'm like, Sal was seeing the future. He knew what was going to happen. Uh, you love the race to 10, Sal, in basketball. And I like the race to 10 in football this weekend, oh. in this game in particular. I'm going to take the Browns race to 10 at plus 130. You can find this on FanDuel right now. But I just feel like the Browns get out to an early lead. Jameis scores an early touchdown. It's 10 to 3. Cleveland fans are getting excited. It, you know, it's all kind of setting itself up for... The Steel City special, as you mentioned at the top here. So uh, the race to 10, I like the Browns, but I like the Steelers to win I the like game. It. So Have you, you tried race to 69 in the NFL? It's kind of boring. You don't know. <laughs> the Lions are the only team that gives you a chance. Right. But. That's what I need the animal to, to get us there. But, uh, you know, we'll see what happens. It works in college basketball. We need to get that uh, on the FanDuel site. We'll see if we can get there. 